Well, what's going on here? We thought we'd uh, show you a few uh, scenes from Skylab. Here it is, the 22nd day of our flights, our uh, first real day off. We thought we'd show you one of the things that goes on in here in a day off. We need a haircut for quite a while. So that's what's going on. Here's uh, Captain Alan Bean, who is uh, the leader of this mob. Every mob has a leader. And a uh, distinguished professor and mad scientist, uh, Owen Garriott, uh, trimming his hair. Doing pretty well, too. He's uh, flicking off the hair up with that little blower up there. Might show you the tools of the trade using Skylab, much like you might use on Earth. A little comb with a razor in it. Seems to be working quite well. Just a plain old hair comb. We also have some bandage shears, which they come out later when we have to patch him up. Well, I can see it's not going to be a professional job, but there's no waiting and the price is right. Well, here we are again, space fans. We thought we'd drop back and uh, see how it goes after a while. Looks like uh, it's getting cut pretty short. Al, of course, has always had his hair trimmed rather short. Back in the Navy, they used to call him skinhead. Now they call him captain. Owen's doing a great job. See, we have all the comforts of the modern barber shop. Music in the background. We're doing this in the uh, waste management compartment. Thought it'd be lots of a mess this way. One of the advantages, of course, of uh, having your hair cut zero G is that you don't have to sweep. The hair doesn't fall down. It doesn't even get on your shoulders. It gets up in the air sometimes. You just vacuum it up like this. That's what I'm doing. Catching this. Uh, Loose hair with a vacuum cleaner. Doing a nice job, Owen. You might wonder why we chose Owen to do this job. Well, we figured you could always trust the barber with a mustache. Well, we'll come back and check on them a little later, see how they're doing. You know, there aren't many folks who get their hair cut. 18,000 miles an hour. We go around once every 93 minutes. But when you're inside, things are different. As you can see, I'm floating. I'm not touching anywhere. Uh, that's one of the things that makes space sort of interesting. It not only makes it interesting when you're doing your scientific work, like we do on these medical experiments, not only makes it interesting when you're sleeping, like we do in the compartment behind you, or in the wardroom, or the head, but it's interesting when your time's off and you got a little free time of your own. And if you'll go upstairs, we'll go upstairs now. Let's take a look at uh, some of the things we can do with zero gravity when we're trying to relax.
Its compartment is much bigger than below. It's larger than a, a large room in, a, in your house. It's okay. Let's get him out it. They cut this bit of it out. Make it right. It's a very big room. It's about 20 feet in diameter, and it's even higher from the hole in the command module down to the hole in the floor. So there's a lot of things you can do. For example, you can push out of the hole in the command module from the command module area and perform rolls or tumbles all the way down to the floor. You can go as fast as you like or as slow as you like. We've got 25 storage lockers around the periphery of the vehicle. And if you give yourself a little push, the same forces that will slide your car to the outside of a turn will give you some traction so that you can run around these lockers. We can do stunts up here that gymnasts and acrobats and divers have never been able to do on Earth. Let's try a few.
Okay, here we are back in uh, Skylab. We're uh, above the Earth now, 270 miles, and we're going 18,000 miles an hour. And uh, it's time to clean up. We've had some hard days up here. We've worked hard. Normally, we take a uh, uh, wash rag type bath with a towel all right, and a wash rag in the waste compartment there. But it's Saturday night, and uh, I think it's time to take a shower. So uh, Jack's going to give us one. Let me show you how we do it. First of all, we got to get some water from somewhere. We use this device right here. It's not unlike a squirter that you have on your family sink. Matter of fact, this nozzle design was taken from a family sink squirter. You push the trigger, the water comes out. Okay, how about some soap, Jack? You're gonna need that. Okay, here's some soap, it's special. It won't clog up the filters. We catch every bit of the water, put it back in a bag, and throw it out the spacecraft down inside the big tank below us. This soap is a special kind. You push here, it comes out there. It's a liquid detergent. And then lastly, how do you get the water off of you? We got a vacuum cleaner type arrangement. It's got a suction on it. Water will come off Jack down in here and into a bag. So his procedure is this. He's going to get inside, bring up his shower, and he's going to use the squirter to get wet, soap, vacuum to get dry. And then wet, vacuum, wet, vacuum, until he's used all the water he's got, which is up in this little tank right here, which is about three quarts. So we'll leave Jack to his own devices here. Don't forget to take off your clothes, Jack. Leave Jack to his own devices and see how it comes out. We'll be back in a few minutes to see how it's doing. Okay, I'll uncut. Okay, we're back again at the shower. It's been about 35 minutes, and uh, Jack is, hasn't spent most of that time washing. He spent a good percentage of it wiping up the water that's been inside. Not wiping up, but using the vacuum. Uh, he first vacuumed himself, as you recall, two or three times, and then he came and vacuumed the inside of the uh, of the tank. So how's it doing in there, Jack? Hey, come, come out, then. You look good? Right Boy, I feel better, too. Clean marine. Yes, sir. <laughs> I want to congratulate you, too, Jack, on uh, your new world record. Uh, took about 35 minutes, and near as I can figure, that's about 15,000 miles you traveled. So you may have had the longest shower in the history of mankind. It was a bad shower. <laughs> it was, huh? <laughs> okay. That's it. <laughs> We got a good picture down here. Okay, I'm uh, showing you a picture out of uh, number four window at this time. Uh, you can see one of the uh, straps there that's been uh, tightened up to uh, hold the sail, the, uh, one of the rigging lines, and there's uh, the edge of one of the solar panels right there.
just uh, coming up on the uh, sunrise in the Skylab. Over here, you can see it's still dark. The sun angle will be uh, between zero and one. Approach will be at 1128, which should be uh, just in a few seconds. Uh, is that time still a good story? It's yeah, the best we've got, Jack. Hey, if you can see Yucatan, it's right on the northernmost edge. Space fans, we're uh, taking a look up here in Skylab this, Sky this morning at the uh, tropical storm Brenda. She's a uh, relatively small storm. Winds uh, up to 55 knots. Moving in a west northwesterly direction at this time in about 10 knots. She's uh, out in the Gulf of Mexico near the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. Name is Brenda. You know anybody uh, named Brenda not here a chance to tease them about their temperament? Okay, Skyland, thanks for the weather Ready? report. We're 10 seconds to LOS. Okay, well, See you over the Vanguard in nine minutes.